Praise the Lord. Thank you. 
But Father God, right now in the name of Jesus, we ask a special blessing for those that are next door that lost their loved ones. Hallelujah. All those that have lost their loved ones. And even though some don't claim it, we're still in a pandemic. So many people have lost their loved ones. And we're praying that God send his comforting spirit to their house this morning in Jesus' name. Remember those that are fighting in Ukraine. Remember the leaders in the name of Jesus. And we're asking that you cover every pastor today, God. Allow them to bring forth the word of God to feed your people this morning in the name of Jesus. Lord, send your spirit to this place this morning, God. Hallelujah. We just want to feel your fresh anointing. Hallelujah. And your power. This morning in the name of Jesus, bless those that are sick and inflicted, those that have backslid, bring them back home before it's everlasting too late, God. They still have breath in their body. You're able to save, deliver, and heal in the name of Jesus. And God, we ask right now for our musicians, hallelujah, and the angel of this house, our pastor, our singer, in the name of Jesus, just bless God this morning. Hallelujah. Do it in the name of Jesus. We'll give you the praise. We'll give you the praise. We'll give you the praise, the glory, and the honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's give God some praise in this house. Hallelujah. Come on now. You can open up your mouths and give him some praise in this house. He is worthy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on and worship him right now. Come on, if you can stand to your feet, lift your hands and let's let's set this atmosphere. Come on, y'all. Come on. Let's set this atmosphere. We love you, Jesus. We love you, God. To worship you highly. Yes, yes, yes. To worship you highly, highly. To Is anybody living to worship him this morning? Can you lift your hands and say it with us? Hallelujah to worship him. To worship you, I live. To worship you, I live. I live to worship you. Come on, take charge of your own. And help them to say it this morning. In Jesus' name. Let's say it again. To worship To worship you. To worship you, I live, I live to worship you. Oh, that ought to sound good where you are. That ought to feel good right where you are. Come on, lift that beautiful hand and say it to the Lord. Come on. To worship you, I live to worship. To worship you, I live, I live to worship you. Yeah. 
say it one more time and we're going to close it. mercy and for his love. I pray that you have experienced God in that moment. I pray that you took a moment to worship him, took a moment to praise him, and took a moment to glorify him. What's the use of coming to church if I don't worship? What's the use of getting dressed, amen, if I don't worship? Can somebody say something to me this morning in Jesus' name? What's the use of going through all the motions and I never get God thanks him. I've never expressed gratitude to him for what he's done. I don't know about you, but I stand in a grateful place this morning. I'm going to say that again. I stand in a grateful place this morning. I'm grateful to God. It don't have to be how it is. It don't have to be as good as it is. Amen. Amen. But God has been good. And so we worship him. We praise him. We adore him. We bless him. Him. This morning, in Jesus' name, I want to take this official opportunity to welcome you to Last Days Church. We welcome you into the sanctuary. Those of you that are at home and on the broadcast, we welcome you in Jesus' name. We thank God for you. Can we get a welcoming praise in this house? 
So we're going to welcome you, praise in this house. We welcome you, we welcome you, we welcome you. Amen. And I thank God because, amen, you may have drove past a lot of places to be here this morning. Synagogues, various sects of Christian churches. But we thank God that you are in the house of worship with us this morning. And we don't take it for granted. We don't take it for granted. Those of you that are at home, because you took out the time to tune in to the broadcast and to set this time aside for God, I make a prophetic promise, as I always do, that before you log off today, you're going to be blessed. You're going to be strengthened. You're going to be encouraged. You're going to be motivated. I make a prophetic promise in this sanctuary that before you walk out the door, you're going to be better than you were when you came in. Before you walk out the door, you're going to feel the presence of God. You're going to feel the glory of God. You're going to feel the power of God. Hallelujah. We thank God. We thank God. So we welcome to Jesus and to the living that's found from being in God's presence. Amen. So we welcome each and every one of you. This morning, we thank God in Jesus' name that we're going to move forward in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Uh, can you believe that it's already May the 1st? Can y'all believe it that it's May the 1st? Amen. Amen. It is amazing in Jesus' name. And we have said that because every first of the month we want to make sure that we share something with you. We have declared 2002 as the year of limitless possibilities. As limitless possibilities. Correct me, I'm doing eight days. Jesus said. 22 is the year of limitless possibilities. And we wrote a declaration and we declared it at the beginning of the year. And I said every first of the month, I want to bring it back before you because I want it to be fresh in your mind. I want it to be fresh in your spirit. Amen. And so, if you would stand up with me, we are going to declare this declaration. If you don't have it, amen, maybe you can go to one of the broadcasts or email it to you or whatever you need to do. Stand up with us. Stand up with us. And we're going to declare this. If you haven't heard it, just lift your hands and receive it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Because we are talking about tapping into God who has no limitations. And so we are limited by the fact that we are human. But the reality is, is that if I can tap into God who has no limitations, that means my limitations begin to shrink as I go deeper into him. Oh my God, I wish somebody would wake up and say amen. I wish somebody would give God praise in this house. So we want to declare this this morning for you in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. This is, if you know it, you can quote it with me. This is the year of limitless possibility. Because God is my exceeding great reward. All things are possible to us who believe. Mountains shall be moved. Dreams will come to fruition. I will consciously identify and remove all barriers that hinder the probability of possibility. I will maintain my covenant to consistently receive blessings that there is not room enough to receive. Amen. Now unto him that is able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all we ask or think in Jesus' name. Amen. Somebody give God an amen. Come on, I said an amen. I didn't say nothing about a head clap. I said an amen. I, I said a praise. Huh? Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So this morning in Jesus' name, and I want you to get something in your spirit. I want you to get in your spirit and live in this possibility. You know what blessed me this morning? As I was studying and finishing up and trying to put some more things in, the phone began to go off. Text began to come forth. That this 
person's not going to be here. This person's not going to be here. And, and I'm saying, well, that's, that's the whole place. <laughs> okay. But something in me rose up. I wish I had a witness in here this morning. Something in me rose up and said, do what has to be done. Then I got a motivational alert that said you're more than enough. My spirit began to jump up. It said you're more than enough. You have what it takes. Oh, I wish I had a witness in here that believed that you're more than enough. You believe that you have what it takes to be successful, to reach the next level, to get to the next dimension of your life. We bless God. We glorify God. So if you would, we're going to turn towards the word of God in Jesus' name. We're going to turn towards the word of God. We're going to, we're going to go in. And, and I, I want to tell you this. I want to tell you this. I want you to begin to notice something. I want you to begin to look at circumstances differently. Oftentimes, when things go bad, it's a setup for God to position you for what he's about to do. Y'all understand that? Oftentimes when things go topsy-turvy and become chaotic and you find yourself discombobulated, it is an indicator that you are closer to breakthrough than you've ever been. Because oftentimes the enemy starts moving when God starts blessing. The enemy starts moving. I wish I had a witness in here this morning. The enemy starts moving when God starts to show up. Uh, so this morning, get ready. Get ready. This morning, put your seatbelt on. Because we're getting ready to step into the presence of the Lord. We're getting ready to step into the glory of the Lord. We're ready to tap into, amen, what God is doing right now. Oh, I wish I had a witness in this time. Somebody say hallelujah. Come on, say it about four times. Hallelujah. Try the atmosphere. Come on, say it. 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 Sometimes the devil don't know who he messing with. Amen. Amen. I'm not a regular one. I'm I'm not mm, not I'm not a run of the meal. I'm not one of them ones that are easily deterred or easily moved. Sometimes the devil don't know who he messed with. The Bible even said that if he would have knew who Jesus was, he they would not have killed the Lord of God. If they would have known. Tell somebody if you only knew. If you, come on, tell them. Don't be scared of them if you only knew. There is more to me than what you see. If you only knew what I've been dealing with, going through. Amen. If you only knew what I'm expecting God to do. Tell somebody, wake up, wake up, wake up. Tell them. I said, tell them. Don't be scared of them. Wake up. You just woke up. Don't sleep in church. Hallelujah. Don't be, listen, listen. Don't let Beelzebub defeat you right now. Amen. Beelzebub is a term that they gave towards the enemy. They called Jesus uh, a devil, but he, he says he's controlled by Beelzebub, which is the Lord of the flies. Mm -hmm. All flies do is distract you. That's right. They can't kill you. But all they do is distract you. They make you miss what's really important. Amen. And you will kill yourself trying to kill a fly. Mm. Mm. Don't let bells above rob you now. The word is about to come forth rich and powerful. And sharper than any two at your sword. Don't let bells above rob you right now. Grab your Bibles and go with me to the book of Matthew. We're going to pick up just one verse where we started at. And by chance, you didn't tune in last week or you didn't get the message from last week, I'm going to challenge you to go back and look at it. It's on Facebook. It's on YouTube. Go back and look at it because 
You need that part to understand this part. All right. All right. And I want you to be blessed. Amen. I want you to be blessed. I don't want to be around folks that ain't blessed. Amen. Yeah, can I get a can I get a sanctified amen? amen. I don't want to be around people that ain't getting breakthrough that are that are not moving forward. I don't want to be around people that are stagnating. Amen. 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 I told someone yesterday. I will, I will not reduce the facets of my character so that you will be able to relate to me. Oh my God. Come on, Amen. Right. Come on now. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Because I'm intelligent, because I can articulate thought, you're offended or you think that I'm bougie. Because I choose to cultivate and hone the faculty that God has entrusted me with. Hello? Hello? To tell somebody. Mm -mm, mm -mm. If you can't handle who I am, that's your business. If you can't deal with, amen, how God is blessing me, that's your problem. Uh, I'm not arrogant, stuck up, eccentric, pompous, or any of that. But I do know who I am in God. Amen. And because I've discovered who I am in God, I had this happen to me before somebody spoke some things to me, neutralized my character, said that you need to scale back, you need to water it down, you, you don't need to be all so and so and so. And I did that, and I went around for a year and a half miserable. Because I had saluted and sedated what God had put in me. And I, saw, I read Psalms 139. That you are fearfully and wonderfully made. Amen. 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 Oh God, I wish I had a witness. And God began to say to me that if you neutralize your character, if you dilute and, and, and water down who you are, you're watering down the glory that I put in you, and I'm the one that put it in you. So you're watering me down. Oh God, oh, I wish I had a witness. I wish I had a witness. So, I said it before, and I don't apologize. I will shout in your face. <laughs> I'll break out with a praise in your face because of God's goodness to me. Matthew chapter number six. Let me move. I got some ground to cover. Matthew chapter number six. And we looked at the 34th verse, which was the conclusion of the principle that Jesus was teaching. I want to say this to you. Do not consistently break God's principles and expect to be the recipient of the benefits that are connected to that principle. Amen. Y'all got to say something. Y'all got to say something. Amen. Amen. The scripture, the word, the purpose of reading is that you understand the principles. And the principles are what govern the movement in the kingdom. And if you are a citizen of the kingdom, you need to operate within the principles that govern the kingdom so that you consistently are a recipient of the blessings that flow in the kingdom. Amen. Oh my God, I wish I had a witness in this house. So he says in verse 34, he says, take therefore no thought for the morrow. <laughs> Notice he didn't say two morrow. Mm -hmm. He said the morrow. Uh -huh. And then he said for the morrow <laughs> shall take thought for the things mm -hmm. of itself. Mm. And then he, come, he sums it up by saying sufficient unto the day 
is the evil thereof. Y'all read it. Come on. Y'all read verse 34. Matthew 6 and 34. Come on. Take therefore no thought for the morrow. For the morrow shall take thought for the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. All right. All right. Amen. And I'm going to minister to you today living in the now. Amen. 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 Part two. Living in the now. Tell somebody I'm living in the now. I'm living in the now. I'm living in the now. If you're living in the now, give God a praise right now. Not for what you're doing at the church right now. Not for where you got to go. Come on. Look at where you are right now. Amen. Act accordingly to where you are right now. Not the pot roast, not washing the car, not cleaning out the garage, but worshiping God. Amen. Right now. Amen. You can be seated in the presence of the Lord. God is so good. Amen. I'm learning how to live in the now. You know why it is so important to live in the now? Because the now is never going to happen again. Mm -hmm. Hello? Mm -hmm. That moment that you just said, mm -hmm, that moment gone. Yes. That moment ain't coming back no more. And you know what I found out about people, our natures? is oftentimes because I am preoccupied with other thoughts, I really don't get to enjoy the fullness of what's happening right now. Amen. Because I'm preoccupied with other thoughts. And this is what Jesus is trying to teach them. He is actually trying to teach them about not having anxiety and not having worry. Mm. We are living in one of the most medicated societies. All right. Because everybody has anxiety. Mm -hmm. you, you would be shocked at the people who work beside you or or the people who assist you on a regular basis. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm hesitant because I want to be sensitive. You would be shocked at the people in your family who on a regular basis deal with anxiety and worry. And Anxiety and worry is the thief against peace. Did you catch what I just said? No, you didn't. Anxiety is the thief that robs you of the peace that is available. Can I tell you this to you? The reason some of us don't work is because we tapped into the peace. Right. I thinking about something and being worried about something is two different things. Jesus is trying to teach the principle is that if your heavenly father takes care of sparrows and takes care of lilies that he can take care of you. Yeah. Then he poses a question, are not you worth more than many sparrows? Hmm. The birds around my house have not helped to pay the mortgage. Amen. <laughs> but they living good. I came out the back door. One of them just looked at me like, hey, what you doing? <laughs> he done built a nest on my gut. 
And he looking at me like. <laughs> and I got to thinking. He ain't worried. He ain't concerned. Why? Because he know the worm is coming in the end. Do anybody know that a blessing and a breakthrough is coming at any minute? Do anybody know that God is going to supply all your needs according to his riches and according to his glory? So don't worry. Learn how to live in the now. And I said this last week, and let me, let me go ahead and preach now. I said this last week. A lot of people save all their money, 401k, investment, amen, work six, seven days a week, amen, just look at, wait till I retire, when I retire, when I retire, and retirement may not come to you, you better learn how to live in the now, hello, that's why every once in a while I take me a vacation. I want to go somewhere and totally unplug. Cut the TV off. Cut the computer off. My phone is off. I have no internet. The people that I need to talk to are with me. Hello? Because I want to learn how to live in the now. And sometimes we become so consumed and so overwhelmed with working and getting ahead and being prosperous and trying to get to the next level that we don't enjoy where God has placed us at now. God wants you to live. Tell somebody God wants you to live right now. All right, all right. Let me let me go ahead. I'm, I'm preach before you leave up out of here. Yes, I am. Yes, I am. The devil is a liar. So we found out a couple of things. We found we found out a couple of things. We found out, Amen, that God does not want us to worry. That He wants us to have the peace of God that passes all understanding. Yes. He wants us to get to the place where we are kept and anchored by that peace. And one of the principles that taps into that peace on a consistent basis is that you keep your mind stayed upon Him. Yes. Amen. That's what it says that He'll keep you in perfect peace. Do I got a church in here today? Amen. So we, we tapped into that and we understand that we want to get to that realm of peace. And, but, but the problem is, is that because we are human and because we are finite and we are challenged by time, we are challenged by what's going to happen today. We're challenged by what happened in our past. We're challenged by what's going to happen tomorrow. But yet, yet the only way that I can conquer this mystery of time is that I got to tap into God. Because if I can tap into God, God in his relationship to time is transcendent of our humanity. In other words, he is not affected by the time the way that you and I are. Amen. You and I are affected by the time. And, 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 and a matter of fact, if you realize that time was not created for God, that time was created for man. That's how we track time. But God is God from everlasting to everlasting. God is God from the rising of the sun until the going down of the sand. His name is worthy to be praised. Oh, I need somebody that's sanctified to wake up and get on the train with me. God, amen, is transcendent when it comes to time. I told you that he is the God of the past. He is the God of the present. And he is the God of the future. Which means that he knows how to deal with your failures of your past. He knows how to deal with the stuff that you did when you were 15, 16, 18, 19, 30, 35. Oh God, y'all ain't saying nothing to me. But give God praise. Because your past has not determined your future. Give God praise because your past and that has not written off what God is about to take you. Why? He's the God of the past, the present, and the future. God is going to do some stuff right now that your tomorrow is going to be bright. Why do I say that? Because he says, I know the thoughts that I think towards you. Thoughts of good, not of evil. And to bring you to an expected end. Oh, praise the name of our God. I'm going to preach to myself if you don't want to go. Oh, praise the name of our God. So he says he is the God which is. The God which was. And the God which is to come. He is a transcendent God. And I love him for that. 
And so we found out that yesterday is history. Tomorrow is a mystery. So I got to thank God for the present time now. Oh, bless his wonderful name. And so as we begin to look at this, we begin to understand that God is the God of time. And what is time? I told you that time is a non-spatial continuum measured by events which succeed one another from past through present to future. I didn't learn that until a drunk man asked me what time was. I didn't learn that until I was posed with the mystery of time. I couldn't articulate it. I couldn't understand what it was. But now that I know what time is, and now that I know how important time is, it's time for you to live in the now. Somebody say, I'm going to live now. Come on, I want you to holler. <laughs> that I'm going to live now. <laughs> that I'm going to worship now. Then I'm going to bless God now. Then I'm going to learn how to live in the moment. You know what I found out? Because the moments that you ignore, you never get them again. And I found out this about life. Some of the greatest things happen spontaneously in life. Some of the greatest things are not rehearsed. They are not practiced. They happen in the now. Oh, praise the name of our God. And if you're so preoccupied or so distracted that you cannot enjoy the moment where God has you at, uh, you, you stand the possibility of missing the great now. And I said this, there is a theologian, yes, by the name of Paul Tillich out of Germany, and he taught a theological thought that was called the eternal now. And what do you mean the eternal now? To us, the eternal now does not make sense because, oh uh, God, we are finite. We have extended to eternity. So the eternal now doesn't really make sense to us. But in order for us to understand the eternal now, I got to understand that the eternal now is relative to God's now. The eternal now is relative to how God sees time. And I already told you that his beard doesn't turn gray because a day went past. Because with God a day is as a thousand years and a thousand years is as one day. Oh God, I wish I had a witness in this house. Oh my God. And so now we got to understand the sensitivity of time. Oh my God, go with me real quick. Oh God, go with me to the book of Matthew chapter number 16 and we're going to bring this out really quick. Thank you, Jesus. Matthew 16. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. And Jesus condemns the Pharisees, the religious leaders, and the Sadducees because they were tempting him. They wanted to see a sign. And even today, we want to see signs. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Let me help you. Turn on CNN. You see signs all around you. Let me help you. Pay attention. <coughs> Get off Facebook and Twitter and Twat and all of that mess and TikTok. I'm against social media. Well, we just don't use it right. And half of it is just mess. Hello? Half of it is mess. You pull it up, the first seven, eight things is mess. You run across one thing every once in a while that's wholesome, that's solid. So look at what the Bible says. The Pharisees, uh, Matthew 16 and 1, the Pharisees also with the Sadducees, these are the religious leaders, the different sects of the day that led people. And I want to tell you this. You need to watch your religious leaders. Because if the blind lead the blind, everybody's going to fall in that ditch. If you always hitting the curb and running over stuff, you ought to ask whoever's driving. Can you see? 
<sighs> they asked, tempting him, desiring him that he would show them a sign from heaven. He answered and said unto them, what? Y'all say it. He said, y'all know how to look at the sky. He said, when it's evening, you say it's going to be fair weather. For the sky is red. And then what does he say? And Some of y'all know how to look at the clouds. I asked y'all who's country up in here last week. Some of y'all know how to look. Oh, it's going to snow. Look at them clouds, how they hanging over there. Look at the formation of them. Oh, it's going to rain. Oh, girl, you better take your medicine. Look at how that is. It's going to be bad for, uh, for people who got allergies. We know how to read the sky. But look what he says. For ye, the sky is red and Lord. He says, oh, you hypocrites. He calls them stage actors. Tell somebody to take the mask off. Why? Because it's time to be real now. Take the mask off. Stop playing the role. Start walking the role. Hello? Stop coming to church dressing like you were saying, acting like you were saying. But when you go home or when you leave here, you live any kind of way. Oh, God, now is the time for you to live right. Now is not the time to be loose and messing up and going backwards instead of forward. Oh, y'all scared to say something. Amen. You can discern the face of the sky. But what? You can read the weather, but you can't see the signs of the time. What signs of the time right now? COVID. Hello? Didn't he say that there's going to be famines and pestilences? If you convert pestilences from Greek, it literally means viruses. Hello? You want more signs? Putin took his tanks and crossed the border Hello? Into Ukraine. Wars. You want more signs? Hello? Do you know a food shortage is coming? Hello? One of the signs is famine. Famine is a food shortage. Do you know that Ukraine and Russia are the biggest exporters of grain? Did y'all know that? Okay. You better wake up and read the signs then. So it's important now that you live in the now because the signs are around us. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go. I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you some solid word. You might not pre, uh, shout over, amen, a new Cadillac today, but you shout over some word when you leave. Amen. Romans chapter 13. Go there. Romans 13. Get on the train with me. Get on the train with me. And I'm going to be so happy today that church folk have as much joy over the word as they did over the draft. Use in front of the TV, hollering it. Because your boy got picked to go to. Hello. I wish we get that kind of passion over the world. And not just the basketball game. Or the housewife. Ooh. Romans chapter 11. Let me give you some solid word. Live in the now. Live in the now. Romans chapter 11. Excuse me. I meant 13 and 11. That's why I'm going to start. Romans 13 and 11. This is serious. What does it say? Y'all read it. Stop. 
stop in that knowing the time. Do you realize that the Apostle Paul is writing to people who should know some stuff? Come on, teach us. He says knowing the Greek term is genosko, which means to fully understand, to comprehend, to get it. He says knowing what the time if anybody ought to know what time it is, church folk ought to know. If anybody ought to know what to do now, church folk ought to know. Hello? Now is not the time to get loose and to back up and to reconsider. Now is not the time to draw away. Now is the time to draw closer to God. Knowing the time that what? Time to wait, 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 what do you mean that now is high time? What do you mean by high time? It's urgent. It's, it's exigent. Hallelujah. You, it's, it's no time to play. It's, it's right now. It means that there needs to be an intensity right now. Why? It's high time. And you know the time. So it's time now for you to live in the now. It's time now for you to live based off the knowledge that you know right now. By the things that you see. He says this. It's high time to do what? Push somebody, tell them, wake up. Push them, push them. Don't be scared of them. Y'all are touching each other. I say push them. My mama never could wake me up by touching me. She had to throw a bucket of water on us. We'd be busting our long sleep so long. Hello? Tell somebody, wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Wake up. Realize that it's high time. Realize that this thing is individual. Why do I say it's individual? Some people around you want to stay asleep. Let them go ahead and sleep. You remember even Jesus, when it came down to him, getting his breakthrough, he took, see, y'all gotta, you gotta learn how to get it for yourself. See, even Jesus, when he went to the Garden of Gethsemane, he was praying, and he was praying three times, and he had disciples with him, and each time he went back, the disciples were asleep. Jesus told him that third time. He, the first, second time, he said, catch y'all. <laughs> Just for an hour. You can text all day, but you can't pray for a while. Hello? You can send emails all day and emojis. All day. But then, when it comes down to spiritual things, hurry up. It's high time. And what has happened, the church, if we're not careful, will fall asleep with the world. Hello? And guess what the Bible teaches us about sleep? Thieves break in when folks are asleep. Thieves steal when folks are asleep. Hello? So it's high time for us to wake out of our sleep. And what's so bad? Oh my God, any of y'all know people that sleepwalk? Mm -hmm. Sleepwalking is dangerous. Because yeah. in that realm of sleep, the person is in a really deep sleep. But because they're asleep, they're, there's eye movement. And they go into stuff and they getting up, they opening doors, they doing all kind of stuff and they sleep. Please, church, don't sleep while we're out with you. Amen. Please, church, don't do that while we're supposed to be getting the breakthrough. Amen. So it is high time for us to awake out of our sleep. Romans chapter 13, verse 11. Why? In other words, they're saying Jesus coming back is closer than when you first believed. He is saying it's hot time. It's now time. Now is the time for you to wake up. Why? Because what you first believed when you got baptized is closer to you today. All right, all right. Hello? It's hot time. 
And, and some of us don't believe. Ah, listen to this. Our salvation is nearer than when we believe. And then he, he brings clarity in verse 12. Come on, we're going to get there. The night, the night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast out what was our son and let us He's saying the night is far spent. He said, you know, a lot of people, you know, a lot of people like doing the stuff at night, but you can't do nighttime stuff in the day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hello? Oh, y'all ain't been saved all y'all life. Houdini told us a few years ago, the freaks come out at night. Yeah. Hello? But we are not supposed to be doing nighttime things when we are supposed to be light. Oh, y'all better say something to me. You're supposed to be light. You're supposed to be casting light in dark places. How can you be light and you a black light? You know, black light only shows certain things. Black light bring out what the naked eye can't see. Hello? We shouldn't be black lights. Now, let me take you somewhere. It's important that we start to live in the now. Because why? It's already told us, amen, that now is our salvation nearer. Now is the time for us to wake out of our sleep. Now we should wake up because we know what time it is. Now, let's go to the book of Ephesians chapter number 5. Come on. Go there. Ephesians chapter 5. Mm -hmm. Y'all really, y'all turn kind of quick. Turn kind of quick because I got to hurry up. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 5. And I'm going to tell you something. You better fall in love with the truth and with the word. Amen. Because if you don't, amen. The Bible says some folks is messed up and lost because they don't love the truth. They didn't develop a love for the truth. They'd rather hear fables. And let me say something to you. This is not a church that's going to preach to you about fables and miracles all the time and breakthrough. Do we have miracles and breakthrough and fable? Of course we do. Amen. But that's not our objective. Our objective is that our natures be nurtured to what he is. That we be like him. Blessings and breakthrough and all of that is a byproduct. That's just like sweating. You, you run a couple blocks and see don't you start sweating. You ain't even got to try. Amen? So, Ephesians chapter 5. Let's look at verse 14. I ain't got time. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, let's go to verse 8. Hurry up. Get to verse 8. Get to verse 8. I'm just going to give you some context because you got to see how, how deep this is. Verse 8, Ephesians 5. For ye sometimes were darkness. But what? So you used to be darkness, and I tell people all the time, sometimes they be trying me, I say, you know I ain't been a pastor all my life. You know that you do know that, right? Right? All right. He says, for you sometimes were darkness, but now you light. Verse 9. But the fruit of the Spirit is all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Ten. Ten. Providing the acceptable the Lord. Proving what is acceptable to Lord. Verse 11. Come on. What I look like being a preacher supposed to be sanctified and a pastor, but I, my best friend is the biggest dope dealer in Nashville. Every time you see him, me and him eating shrimp, we hanging out. <laughs> Pretty soon, you, you're going to say, you know what? Mm -hmm. I think Pastor Bell up to something. Right. <laughs> Some folk already say that. Okay. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But he's saying to you right now, don't let fellowship, your koinonia, your, 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 your distribution, your fellowship, your closeness, your interaction, your, you become a partaker of people who are dark, doing dark things. He said, don't let your koinonia have fellowship with the unfruitful works of scotia, darkness, but rather reprove them. Then he says this, come on. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done against the secret. Listen to this. I ain't gonna call no names. I saw something so funny. Y'all know Muslims 
just finish up Derby and run down. Okay? It's it's one of those tenets in Muslim religion. It's all cool. So they fast for a month, sun up, sun down. You know, they be doing what they need to do. I respect that. Why did I teach him? Why did I catch a Muslim eating some bacon? <laughs> <laughs> he was trying to sneak it to me. <laughs> he said, tell us hell, oh, I'm telling everybody. <laughs> I said, I'm about to shout this on the rooftop. I said, I'm going to call Country Wayne and make him make a video of it. <laughs> Muslims eating bacon go wrong. <laughs> but look what he says. <laughs> For it, it is a shame to speak of those things which are done in secret. All right, verse 13, come on. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. Uh -huh. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Uh -huh. Now, this is where I want you to come on, everybody. Verse 14, come on. Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall In other words, he's telling sleep church folks to wake up. He's telling them, wake up. You used to be in the dark. You used to do that kind of stuff. Don't do that stuff no more. Why? Because it's high time. He says, arise from the dead, and Christ shall give you life. Verse 15. Come on. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. He says, see then that you walk upright. How? Not as fools, but as wise. Why? Why? Because it's high time. You got to live in the now. You got to live based on the knowledge that you have in respect to the world and Christ. I'm not a preacher of doom, but I'm paying attention to signs. Amen. Amen. I ain't ready to tell the world getting ready to end because if you know your Bible, even when we see those signs, it tells us that it's not the end. Amen. It could be the beginning of sorrows. Yeah. It could be the setup of stuff. So I'm living now based on what I know. And let me move. Let me move. He says, all right, see then that you want circumspect in verse 15, not as food. What? Verse 16. What do you mean redeeming the time? You got to make up now for the time that you lost. You got to make up now for the time that you was picking flowers and by the wayside. You got to make up now for the time that you let things slip. You got to redeem the time. You got to buy it back. Mm. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I'm almost finished. I'm almost finished. Now, you know what I found out? I, I, I love this. And I, and I looked at this. I looked at this. God wants people <coughs> who knows how to worship him in the moment. Come on. Amen. Amen. Why do I say that? Because worship is now. Worship should be rehearsed. We can rehearse songs, but you can't rehearse worship. Y'all ain't saying that to me. Why? Because worship is now. It's in the moment. Worship taps into who God is. And there is no way for me to look at God and my value of him don't increase the more I look at him. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Worship ought to happen now. Amen. See, a lot of us, we need an a, a organ player or we need a pianist or we need a, a, a bass player. We need somebody to set the atmosphere. But worship ought to be in your spirit. Worship ought to be spontaneous. Worship ought to break out in you. You shouldn't need somebody to pump the drop you, to stir you, and take you to come up. When you walk in the sanctuary, worship ought to just rise up in your spirit. Why? John chapter 4. Real quick. Go there. Go there. Go there. Go there. Mm. John chapter 4. Let me tell you something. You're going to get out of here. You're going to go back to work. You're going to go back to school. You're going to go home. Don't you wait till next Sunday to worship. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. Don't you wait till you can get back in the sanctuary to worship. Do you hear me? Worship ought to break out anywhere you are. Worship ought to break out in your car. It ought to break out in your living room. Oh, God, it ought to break out in the shower. Worship ought to break out on 40 West 65 North. If you ever see me swerving, it ain't because I'm on my phone. Sometimes I stick my hand out the sunroof and for a mile. And I just say thank you, Jesus. I just say thank you. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Sometimes I stick my hand, amen, out the roof and I just tell God thank you. I don't care about you looking at me, trying to figure out what I'm doing. I'm confusing the enemy. I'm letting the enemy know that God is better than you are. Hello, I wish I had a witness in this house. I'm worshiping God to let the enemy know. That the God I serve is an awesome God. Look at, look at what Jesus taught this lady real quick. John chapter 4, I ain't got time to go through all of it, but I'll give it to you. The woman at the well. And do you know sometimes hmm, Jesus sends other people away just so he can come and fellowship with you. Sometimes Jesus want to meet with you by yourself. Sometimes, amen, this woman was at the well, and guess what? He sent his disciples into the city to buy meat. And he said, I must needs go through Samaria. I want to tell you that God is getting ready to come through your Samaria. I want to tell you that God is getting ready to meet you. That you're getting ready to have an encounter with him. And the encounter is going to change your perspective, your, your dynamic, your paradigm. The encounter is going to change how you see him, how you feel about him, and how you worship him. So this woman, she was, amen, was at the, at the well. Right? And y'all know her. She was a mixed sister. Hello? And America yeah. is becoming mixed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I ain't going to get political. But our paradigms are going to change. I was in Walmart a little while ago. Every baby I saw in Walmart was mixed. Asian and black. Honduran and white. <laughs> I mean Mexican and I mean, it was just, and I was just saying, wow. And you know what happens? The more cross-pollinated, the more hybrid people you get. And the more hybrid people you get, the less prejudiced people become. Mm -hmm. Did you catch that? God knows what he's doing. Mm -hmm. God knows what he's doing. But let, let's move. This woman was at the well. And, and, and look at what happened to this woman. That was at this well. Uh huh. She was at this well. And Jesus done had an interaction with her. Jesus done told her, Give me some water. Y'all know the story. She's giving Jesus some water. She's letting him know I ain't got nothing to draw. It. And Jesus said, If you knew who I was, how many of us really know who he is? If you knew who he was, you wouldn't be worried. You live in the now. If you knew who he was, you tap into who he is. Because what? He'll supply all my needs according to his riches and his glory. I done tapped into that. I don't worry about stuff no more. Hello? Hello? So this woman, this woman, I know, I know, I know, I got to get out of here. This woman, real quick, this woman, she said to him, look, 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 uh, verse 20, she's 19, she said, the woman said to him, sir, I perceive that you're a prophet. Y'all read verse 20. Worship Mount. And you said that Jerusalem is the place where men are. Notice the place of worship now is no more important. Because sometimes we've been indoctrinated to think that worship can only happen in a certain place. But I'm trying to expand your mind and get you to understand that worship is not just only dictated in the sanctuary. Come on, y'all read verse 21. Uh huh. He said, Woman is coming. There is a time coming 
when your worship is not going to just be relegated to Jerusalem or in the mountains. Y'all read next verse. Come on. He said, y'all worship ignorant. And, and I'm going to tell you something. Religion is so, people are so gullible. Some of the things that people worship and, and some of the things that people adhere to, it is so ignorant. Ignorant in the purest sense of the word. Not that you don't have a high IQ level or not that you're not intelligent. You can't read and you can't articulate thought. Ignorant in the purest sense of the word. You don't have knowledge. All of us are ignorant to something. All of us. So he said, you don't know what you worship. He said, for salvation is of the Jews. And then look what he said in verse 23. Did you catch that? He said, the hour coming and now is. And what I'm trying to tell you is learn how to live in the now. Learn how to worship God right where you are. Learn how to worship God on that day, on that moment, in that hour. Learn how to worship God. Even when they give you a pink slip. You say, Pastor, oh, how can I worship when they give you a pink slip? Because if you understand that God is the one that got the green slip, sometimes the pink slip is the one that leads to the green slip, which is the one that leads to the breakthrough. Sometimes it's the pink slip that allowed God to position you for what God wants to do. So you got to learn how to worship him now. Uh, then he brings out a deeper truth. The hour cometh and now is when what? The elite nos proscunia, the true worshiper shall worship the father in what? Spirit and in truth. Worship now. For the father what? God is looking for people that's going to worship him right now. Not for when he give you the breakthrough. Can you worship him while you don't know, when you when you don't know where the breakthrough is coming from? Can you worship him when you don't know what to do? When you can you worship him when you don't know where the money's coming from? But I'm gonna tell you something. Worshippers tap into God, and when God sees that you've tapped into worship, He makes a way when there was no main way, and when there was no way made. Sometimes it is God challenging you to see what you're gonna do in that moment, in that now experience. Sometimes God is trying to bring you to a different level in the now. I start praising God for the new car. And I had a vision while I was standing on the corner in 15 degree weather in 10 inches of snow waiting on my ride to pick me up. I started worshiping. My snot was froze. I was in Detroit. I wasn't down here. My snot was froze. Oh, yeah, it was nasty. But that's how it was. I was on the corner, snot froze, tears in my eyes, they froze. And I started thanking God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. I know you're going to work this out. Thank you, Jesus. I know you're going to bring it. Hello? And I got a vision of myself in a new car. I saw myself on the way to church in a new car. It wasn't many days hence that God opened the door and that new car was manifest. But I wouldn't have saw that if I wouldn't have learned how to worship now. Hello? So learn how to worship God right where you at. And I want to tell you this as I close, as I close. You got to give up some stuff. See, everybody wants God, but we want God at our convenience. But you got to learn how to forsake some stuff. You got to learn how to let some people go. I know he fine, and I know she, she bad. Leave her alone. Amen. She don't want to pray. Mm -hmm. Leave her alone. He don't want to come to church. Leave him alone. Amen. Amen. Real quick, real quick. Let me give you some word. You did, let me give you some word. Some of y'all are scared. Some of y'all are scared. I, I got to give it to you. Luke chapter 18. Go there real quick. Go there real quick. Luke chapter 18. Twenty-eight through thirty. And some people don't want to give up nothing, but we want to receive everything. Mm -hmm. And then when we do give up stuff, we do what Peter did. We've forsaken all to follow you. We don't give up everything. You 
ought to be glad you didn't marry the joker. Amen. Hello? Amen. <laughs> I ain't got time. But the Greek word is prorinsu, and it deals with ordination. And sometimes prorinsu deals with what God sets, and it deals with what God puts down there. But it also deals with what God limits you from. And sometimes God limits you to bless you. Amen. Amen. Some of the stuff he limited you from is the biggest blessing you ever had. You'd have married that crazy joke? Oh, my God. Amen. Tell you crazy stuff. Open the door, get a dog some meat. Hello? Mary said, feed the baby. <laughs> He'd be saying some crazy stuff to you. You're trying to figure out, what is he talking about? We ain't even got a dog. <laughs> Hello? What you give up now impacts your future. Mm -hmm. We've heard of deferred stuff, tax deferred. Mm -hmm. What you give up now. Read this real quick. Read this. Uh, what did I say? Luke 18? Yeah. Luke 18, 28, 30. Come on. We don't live, we gave up everything to follow you. Verse 29. Look at the clarity. He said Hello. Sometimes you have to leave certain people for the kingdom's sake. Hello? He said, ain't nobody left for the kingdom's sake. Then look what he says. Verse 30. No, oh, manifold more in the present time now. Because present time, the Greek term is kairos, which relates to this present opportunity now. So tell somebody, you ain't gave up nothing. You ain't gave up nothing. It don't compare to what you're getting ready to receive now. It don't compare to what he's getting ready to release to you now. It doesn't compare to what he's getting ready to do for you now. And not only are you going to be blessed now, it's something else. What does it say? And in the world to come, what? So God want to bless you now and in the world to come. I don't want to hear one of them preachers or one of them gospels that just talk about pie in the sky and the great getting over. Baby, I want some ham where I am. Bless me now and in the world to come. That's what I read. Hello? See, some of y'all ain't looking for God to do nothing now. I'm looking for him to do exceedingly and abundantly above what I asked or think. When? Now. I'm looking for him to show up right now. I'm looking for breakthrough right now. Live in the now. Mm. A lot of us don't know how to live in the now. Everything has to be rehearsed. I like rehearsed stuff. But life is not rehearsed. Mm -hmm. You got to get to the point where you know how to articulate your thought in the moment. And a lot of us don't know how to do that. A lot of us, before we talk to somebody, I'm going to say, I'm going to. We done already went through. I'm going to let them say this. And if they say this to me, this is what I'm going to say. It's premeditated. Mm -hmm. God wants you to live in it out. Go a couple Amen. chapters further. Verse Luke 21, real quick. We're, this is Luke 21. I'm finishing this and I'm going to be out of the way because I can't preach this on Mother's Day. <laughs> Luke 21. Luke 21. I want, you, I want you to see a principle. And guess what? What is so crazy about this as we close? What I'm getting ready to share with you is based on the signs that they asked him to show them. It's based on what's happening right now around our world. And he's saying, you see these signs, these things are going to happen. I ain't got time to go through it, but you see verse 10, nation going to rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. Verse 11, earthquakes, diverse places, famines, the corona, fearful sights, great signs that will be from heaven. They're going to lay hands on you. They're going to deliver you. They're going to persecute you. Verse 13 says it's going to turn to you for a testimony. Somebody say, what I've been through is going to be a testimony. What I'm going through is going to be a testimony. It's, it's going to be a testimony. And this is what I want you to get. This is what I want you to get. 
Verse 14, what does he say? Make it up in your heart and your mind. What? Not to meditate beforehand how to answer. Did you catch that? He's saying don't meditate it. Don't be premeditated in what you're going to say. Why? Read it. And give you a mouth and wisdom, which all your adversaries shall not be able to withstand or to gain say. He's saying, live in the now. He's saying, learn how to be so connected to me that in the moment I can speak to you and tell you what to say. He's saying, live in the now. Don't be so premeditated. I'm going to say this. They're going to say this. Then I'm going to see that. He said, tap into me in the moment. And he's saying, if you do it, what did he say? I'm going to give you a mouth and a tongue. In other words, what I give you to say going to be so bad that your adversary can't gainsay against you. He'll give you stuff to say. Have you ever uh, shut somebody down because the Holy Ghost spoke to you in that moment? That's what God wants to do. He wants you to live in your life. And as I close, I want you to say that. I want you to understand this. Sometimes people can't live in the now because they're so worried about coming up short. See, when you first get saved, you, should, you probably are preoccupied with coming up short. But now that you've been walking with God, your mind ought to be different. You know what your mind should be? Now unto him. When? Now. Unto him that is able to keep you from falling. And to do what? And to present you what? Faultless before the presence of his glory. Did you catch that? Now. He able to keep you. He says to him be power, dominion, and glory. When does it say? Both now. <laughs> now. Both now. And forever. So I love you. God bless you. Live in the now. Don't be so preoccupied with what's going to happen tomorrow or next week or I've got to do this that you don't enjoy the moments now. Amen. Sometimes to see some of the things that your children do, you are never going to get that moment back again. Mm -hmm. And you're so preoccupied that you can't tap into what your child is doing because mm -hmm. you're texting your girlfriend. Mm -hmm. Y'all just got out the car with each other. Mm -hmm. Oh, God. Be good, Bill. <laughs> I feel that. Be good, Bill. I'm just telling you, living the now. Stand up with me. Stand up with me. To those of you that are at home, we love you. God bless you. I pray that you got grasp what I was trying to say to you to learn how to live in the now. God wants to do some right now stuff for you. God wants to manifest his glory in you when? Right now. So, I pray for you now that you get this word, that you learn how to live in it. If you want to be a blessing to the house of the Lord, you can go to last stage uh, uh, website.org. You can go to Givelify. You can download the application you can be a blessing to the house of the Lord. And as always, myself and First Lady Bell, we love you. We're praying for you. And we miss you. But I want you to live in the now. God bless you, Jesus' name.